All right, so let's see how, how well I can make this work. So I want to look at this problem. I'm going to use this problem over and over again for various purposes in the class, right? Um, and I want to look at it here kinematically. Somewhere else I'll look at it like a physics problem. Um, but here I'll just look at, look at this kinematically. So what we're going to do is what we did in the book, which is to integrate up this acceleration and end up with a um, trajectory. All right, so uh, I'd like, so I'm going to be given this acceleration. And I want to find a trajectory, right? And you're saying to yourself, okay, um, why is this something other than a physics problem? Why, why does um, uh, Ryan Schiller think this isn't a physics problem? Uh, the reason is, is because you don't really construct accelerations this way physically. Physically, what I'd, what I'd want to do is I'd want to build up a differential equation with Newton's laws, right? And in fact, that's what I did to bring this about. So. Um, you know, I, what I'm looking at here is, uh, you know, a ball, all right, that's being expelled. Um, okay, so it's going to be a ball that's going to come out of some tube here, right at the side of uh, some sort of channel, some artificial channel, some plastic channel, where I've got flowing in some sort of viscous fluid uh, at some current W. Right, some the water's coming in with the speed w. Uh, the ball's coming out of this thing here, perpendicular to that, coming out with a speed v naught, and this is at a height h above the um, bottom of this uh, channel. And what I want to do is I just want to find the trajectory of that ball, right? Um, and I've put down basically what the acceleration functions are, all right? And that is not something that I could really just do, right? Um, I have to go through the actual physics, through Newton's laws, or possibly with a Lagrangian or a Hamiltonian or some other way of doing the physics to figure this thing out. And then I go backwards and get the, um, get the trajectory. So at some other point, I will actually go through and make a video about how I got these. And that's all up to you to look at if you want to. It will not actually affect anything you're doing in this class. It, it has to do with a lot of other things that you know, we're not doing. So that'll just be some sort of, sort of cultural thing for you. And I want you to see that at some point because you know I'm going to be using this over and over again and even though this is kinematics like what you did in the first semester of um, uh, physics one I'm the first month of physics one it's really not physics unless you're saying okay I have a situation how do I get to the result right here you're you're saying okay I've got I've really got the result and now I'm going to manipulate it mathematically. And there's a little bit of a difference there. It doesn't sound like much I know to you, uh, but I, it's a very big difference as far as a physicist is concerned. So anyways, I want to find this trajectory and I just want to find it by integration, right? And I guess the first thing I want to do is I want to identify my initial conditions. So ID the ICs, right? Um, and that would be the initial position is going to be uh, some height h in the k-hat direction, right? And the initial speed, r dot zero, is going to be um, v zero in the j-hat direction, right? So this is going to be uh, the y-axis y-axis, this is going to be the x-axis, and this is going to be the z-axis, right? I, J, K. All right, so I've got my initial conditions. What do I want to do with them? Well, like I said, what I'm doing is I'm going to integrate this all the way up to the position. So I'm starting two derivatives down from the position. I have to integrate twice 
to get back up to the position, right? So first thing is I need to find the velocity function by integration. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to break this up into different integrals. Um, there's no reason to write a big long integral with all of these things. Uh, it's going to be a little bit complicated. Now you can just do that. You can just um, keep everything on one line, but you know you don't have to do that, right? You can break things up and put them back together whenever you're ready. So you may as well just break them up, right? Uh, I've noticed a lot of reluctance of students to do that. Don't be reluctant to make your life easier, all right? Just make your life easier and be happy. I think that's a really good um, policy. All right, so I break that up into an x component, a y component, and a z component, right? And that's all going to be equal to the integral of r double dot uh, dt, okay? And so I just want to do that. Uh, so my first thing is is to um, separate the different integrals. Okay. So I want to match this vx up here with an integral of this alpha w e to the minus alpha squared. So alpha is a damping constant uh, for viscous damping. W is the speed of the water and um, T is time, right? So I don't think you were confused about what was representing time. Um, let's see, so I do my integral. I've got alpha W E to the minus alpha T for VX DT. And when I do that, I get um, minus one over alpha E to the alpha T, right? So we have alpha W times minus 1 over alpha e to the minus alpha t, right? That's what I just said, plus some constant for x, right? And I can do the same thing for y, right? V, w, v y of t is this integral um, minus v naught alpha e to the minus alpha t dt. Okay, so that's minus alpha v naught minus 1 over alpha e to the minus alpha t plus some constant for y. And then vz, I've got uh, some integral of, um, what did I say, g prime. Um, g prime, which is sort of the effective gravitational acceleration after I'm taking account, after I'm taking into account buoyancy. So it's a little bit less than uh, the normal gravitational acceleration. Uh, wherever it is you have this experiment set up. All right, so then I have g prime um, minus 1 over alpha e to the minus alpha t plus cz. Uh, then I want to use my ICs to find constants. All right, so I already know what the answer should be, right? So if I say, all right, what I know is that CX is going to equal um, W, or let's see, how, how did I do that? I know what VX is, I'm sorry. So I know what V0 is for X, and where is that? For x, it's 0. So I say 0 is equal to cx minus um, alpha's cancel, w e to the minus alpha t. All right. And actually, that's not an alpha t anymore. That t is a 0. So that's e to the 0, which is 1. So cx is equal to w. All right. That's what my constant here is. Uh, now for the j direction, I know this is going to equal v, v0. So then we have cy minus minus plus alphas cancel, v naught e to the 0. So we know cy, 
right, is equal to v naught minus v naught or zero. Okay. And then finally, we have zero for the velocity is equal to c z uh, minus g prime over alpha e to the zero. So c z is going to equal uh, g prime over alpha. All right, and you might recognize that from elsewhere. That's going to be your um, terminal velocity. All right, so I've got these things together. Now what I want to do is I want to recombine them. Putting it all back into a vector. All right, so that my r dot of t is equal to, um, let's see, w minus that stuff, so that's w1 minus e to the minus a t in the i hat direction. Um, then we have minus, so we've got zero here, plus, excuse me, v naught e to the minus a t um, in the j hat direction, and then we have uh, minus, I think, c z is equal to something positive, so um, let's see, is, is that all correct then? This should be a minus here, I'm sorry. So. Uh, we need a minus sign out here, a plus sign here, a minus sign here, minus g prime over alpha, um, 1 minus e to the minus alpha t. All right, k hat direction. Now, does that make sense? Well, uh, what we're saying is that eventually this ball is going to match speeds with the current. That makes sense. It's, it drag is going to slow it down so that it, um, depending on its speed, it doesn't hit the opposite side of the channel. That makes sense. That's what the drag does. So drag's pulling it along and drag's stopping it. And then drag's going to give it a terminal velocity here. So um, even though this is, this is accelerating, eventually the acceleration is going to stop at a particular speed. So I think that is perfectly fine. I think we're happy with that. Um, so if we're happy with that, we can go on to the next thing, right? Um, and that next bit is going to be just doing the same thing over again. Now we want to find the position by um, integration, right? So three. Uh, find position by integration. All right, and we do the same thing. R is equal to x of t times i plus y of t times j hat plus z of t times k hat, right? So now we go and we do all the integrals, right? We separate the integrals. All right, and we'll say, okay, x of t. That's probably the, the worst x I've ever written. x of t is equal to the integral of um, this funny thing here, which is w uh, times 1 minus e to the minus alpha t dt. Um, that's equal to what? Well, wt uh, minus 1 over alpha, so plus um, w over alpha uh, e to the minus alpha t plus some constant in x, all right? And y of t, we do something similar, right? Integral um, this thing, v naught e to the minus alpha t dt 
In this case, we just have V naught over alpha, e to the minus alpha t, or minus V naught alpha, e to the minus alpha t plus Cy, right? And then we have our Z of t, which is equal to this integral of, um, where did I put it? Minus G prime over alpha one minus e to the minus alpha t dt. So in this case, now we get minus uh, g prime over alpha times t, and then we have a minus of a minus and another minus from the integration. So we're staying minus g prime over alpha squared e to the minus alpha t. All right, and then we add the constant for cz. And then we're going to do all of our voodoo with the ICs, right? Use the initial conditions to find the constants. Okay, uh, let's see. So the initial conditions say that at t equals zero, cx is equal to uh, zero, cy is equal to zero, and cz is equal to h. Zero, zero, h. Right, and then we go and make those equal to things. Um, so at that point, 0 is equal to w times 0 plus w over alpha times e to the 0 plus cx, all right, which means that uh, cx has to be equal to uh, minus w over alpha, right? Let me see here. Then we have the easy one. We have minus v naught over alpha, right? And we have e to the zero, and we have plus cy. So cy just equals um, v zero over alpha. All right, and then we have h equal to minus uh, g prime over alpha times zero minus g prime over alpha squared times e to the zero plus cz, and cz then is equal to, that's zero, that's one, uh, g prime over alpha squared, all right? And again, we just do what we did before and combine them all into one vector. And so if we combine these all into one vector, then what we have is R of T is equal to, um, let's see here, in the I direction we have uh, w times t, um, and then we have a minus w over alpha, so we have minus w over alpha, one minus e to the minus alpha t. Okay, and that's good. If nothing else, this w over alpha um, at least gets us to a um, position. All right, so check your units as you go. Um, then v naught over alpha here, so we have v naught over alpha one minus e to the minus alpha t for our um, for our position there uh, for velocity. So it starts off at it starts off at one minus one is zero, which it does, and then it increases. And finally, since I only have a few seconds left. Um, we end up with minus g prime over alpha squared, one minus e to the minus alpha t, um, minus g prime over alpha times t. All right, and that is our answer. All right, so thank you very much. I'll give you some other stuff with this a little bit later on, but I think it was fun just deriving this equation and I hope you enjoyed it as well. Uh, do a little work on it yourself and we will um, see you very, very soon, all right? Thank you very much, bye now.